Hi, I'm Doramius, and I'm here to help you build your parabolic dish network. Uh, what we are doing is creating a parabolic dish network using two wireless access points bridged together, which also means that we need two um, dishes in order to connect back and forth, um, and, and uh, the antennas and other pieces of equipment, which I will explain in a brief moment. This is kind of a quick follow-up to a um, video I had already done. Um, that was more of a test palette. Uh, the actual video that I had done, many parts of it were lost to a failing hard drive. I apologize for that. Um, I also had um, some laryngitis, which also delayed a lot of that video, which caused part of that thing to fail. It probably, if I had, had I done it sooner, it probably wouldn't have failed on me. Um, I live in Las Vegas, so heat was an issue, so I had to choose my wireless access points wisely. I had to check out um, heat ratings because initially for the first um, dish and piece that I put together um, the wireless access point literally melted after a couple of days in the very hot sun. It came out a very plastic melted goo uh, with components inside it. So be aware of your um, environmental areas something I just did not take into um, consideration or didn't even think of at the time but that is something you'll want to be able to keep in mind now what I used were two wireless access points this one happens to be rated at 45 degrees Fahrenheit or 45 degrees Celsius um, hopefully that's strong enough I also have a soup can or two of them the LNB assembly to a RCA dish um, or Prime Star dish or Dish Network dish or whatever kind of a, a dish you have. As well as two of the dishes. Now I used a seven foot extension cable, cut it in half and put a, uh, a male and female connector on the appropriate ends, um, the cut ends to be able to um, and get two three foot section or three and a half foot sections to run on the dish. That cable will run down this section right here to the access point which will be mounted to the back of the dish. Now the LMB or nose cone which I use for some people who draw a blank when I mention LMB um, I had to take a Dremel or a scraper, you know, you can use whatever tools that will do the job, but make sure you do it safely. Um, be able to remove the silicone coating that holds the back plate on. Once you remove the back plate, there will be a small circuit board assembly in there. Uh, remove that circuit board assembly. You may have to break it out. There may be some screws to remove it. There may be a piece of glass in there, uh, for lack of a, a better term that everyone can understand. Uh, a simple screwdriver will be able to get in there, break it, or wedge it loose. And then the little coaxial um, cable tip there. Um, initially I removed it with a wrench but the hole was too small for the cable that I had for the antenna to fit through. So I had to take a 3 8 drill bit and drill through the hole make it a little bit bigger. So I could fit the cable through. Now I will stress now that the purpose of this example or this setup um, is to be able to extend the range of your LAN or local area network or setup. Um, this is not to be used for stealing bandwidth, stealing um, other people's connections or be able to gain access to other people's networks from a long distance. Um, and many, there are people that have used that and there is a capability to do that but I do not encourage or condone that type of activity. Now. Once you have your cable here in your nose cone, make sure you have a little bit of slack up in front. Put your um, cover on the back. You don't need to glue it back on just yet. Um, make sure you're able to put your antenna 
right on the tip. You don't have to have any special antenna or signal booster or anything like that. Surprisingly, a normal antenna gets a very good signal, sending and receiving. Um, if you want to use a stronger antenna because you have it, go right ahead. Um, depending on the distance, again, you may not need it. Uh, we were able to go with a laptop at about two miles away from the dish and still get full signal. We don't know the potential. Um, and also be careful of um, laws and regulations in your area. Make sure you're not breaking any federal um, communications regulations by increasing your signal strength and blocking other people out. And be sure to um, engage your encryption and security and web keys. That way people do not access your network and hack into your system when you're not looking. Anyway, you put your antenna right at the tip here and this is where the signal will go back and forth between the dish. Now, if you're a little bit handy with a Dremel, you can cut off, cut down half, half, and leave a bit of the top on the Campbell soup can and then drill a hole in the back, braze it or weld basically the, the same thing because this is a light metal, the term I guess is braze, um, braze it to the nose cone and you would have your antenna to basically keep more signal going back between the dish and the antenna. It keeps the signal going in between. The dish spreads it out back and forth to the other dish. Next, um, with the access points, which we'll probably get into a little bit further detail um, once the actual video is finished, uh, showing how to do the TCP IP addressing and setting up to do bridging so they connect to each other for the two connecting two LANs together. So it would be nice to have a um, PC LAN and another 8 PC LAN connect wirelessly for some big gaming fun in two different homes when you don't have space for 16 people in one room. Uh, a lot of this stuff will be posted at convopit.org. Uh, some of the supplies have been graciously donated by uh, other members there. Catmaster, our, the host of convopit.org, uh, had graciously loaned, or <laughs> let me use the access point that melted here in the Las Vegas sun. Um, so I would like to thank him for uh, sending that off to me. And anybody else that has any questions, feel free to make notes and send messages to me or any of the other members at convopit.org. We'll be able to help you with any other computer questions or issues. Now this is primarily again for two access points to engage each other to cr extend the signal length or size of a local area network. For people who are looking for something smaller just to boost their signal so they can have a laptop and be able to go outside on their patio or a little bit further, you can get a s simple Wi-Fi booster or make your own simple weight Wi-Fi booster from like the cardboard out of a cereal box and aluminum foil. There's a great gentleman who hosts techanvil.com and has a whole page devoted to creating such a booster and also has a YouTube video. So I would recommend visiting his site for something simple like that. If you're only planning on extending your range by maybe 100, 300 feet to get that stronger signal within a simple area. These dishes would probably do the exact same thing, but that's a little overkill. Again, if you have any questions, feel free to visit us at convopit.org. Thank you for watching. I'm Duramius in Las Vegas. Have a good one.